The Sony a6000 line is undoubtedly one of the most controversial camera lines to exist. These cameras bridge the gap between photographers and videographers needs with such a vast feature set and amazing quality at such reasonable prices. They also bridge the gap between consumer and pro. But if such a promising camera line sounds so good, what is it that makes it so controversial? All that and so much more coming up. The camera with big shoes to fill and some major flaws that need to be addressed if it wants to be successful. This is the leaks, rumors and more of the next Sony mirrorless crop sensor camera. Let's start with going over Sony's crop sensor camera lineup. The A5000 and A5100 started it all, but what really blew away the competition in this price range, and to this day still sells amazingly, is the original Sony A6000. It packs the 24 megapixel CMOS sensor found in the entire Sony A6000 lineup into an extremely portable form factor with outstanding photo and video quality for the price. Moving on to the A6300, we see the addition of a more premium build and features, but most importantly, that 4 that to this day still blows me away with how sharp it is. Finally, we get to the A6500, the almost perfected crop sensor camera from Sony for photographers and videographers alike. With in-body image stabilization and a touchscreen, let's quickly go over everything that makes these cameras so appealing. To start off, they have a 24 megapixel CMOS sensor, which offer great image and video quality with little to no noise in lower ISOs and surprisingly good low light capabilities that go along perfectly with their amazingly high quality 4K video, which is really what they are known for along with the low light. They also have great slow motion options up to 120 frames per second. They also offer great build quality and an amazing autofocus system. They also have a wide lens selection. They also offer a wide feature set compared to their price, as well as, well, their consumer cameras, and they have a lot of professional features. So now with that out of the way, let's go over the downsides to these cameras and kind of what makes people not just hop on the Sony bandwagon. And that is one, rolling shutter at 4K. The CMOS sensor has a lot of rolling shutter at 4K, there is no doubt about it. Although it can be fixed in post, it would be nice if it just came out of the camera looking not sideways if there's any motion. Next up is battery life. These cameras are known to have kind of crappy battery life. Uh, about an hour of 4K recording, that's about it. Uh, overheating issues. This is a big one. They have improved upon it from the A6300, but it is still kind of an issue depending on if you're shooting in a hot day or not. Next up is the Sony menus. That's all I have to say about that one. You guys know what I'm talking about, Sony menus. And finally, expensive lenses. Now, although they do have a wide selection of lenses, they are pretty pricey, especially compared to the competition for similar focal lengths and apertures. Now, another small thing to go along with the 4K is the dim screen while shooting 4K or 120 frames per second. And finally, the thing that I'm sure you guys have all been waiting for, the biggest downside I would say to these cameras, it's a lack of a flip out screen. And let's get into this video. Next Sony crop sensor mirrorless camera, leaks, rumors, and more. Let's do it. The next Sony crop sensor mirrorless camera is rumored to be called the Sony A6700 or the Sony A7000. The camera will most likely either feature an improved 24 megapixel CMOS sensor like we have seen in all the other cameras in Sony's A6000 lineup or a slightly higher resolution 31 megapixel sensor that was leaked by Sony back in June. The confusion may stem from the possibility of Sony releasing two versions, a lower-end Sony A6700 with the improved 24 megapixel sensor and the higher-end model, the Sony A7000 with the new 31.5 megapixel sensor, but that's just an idea. Continuing, we should expect to see some major improvements made in, to the in-body image stabilization. Although after upgrading to the A6500 after owning the A6300, it is a noticeable difference in normal camera shake, but in comparison to stabilization in phone cameras and even other mirrorless cameras like the Panasonic GH5, there is room for improvement. Next up is some improvements to autofocus and eye autofocus. The whole Sony A6000 line already has great autofocus, but it seems like every generation enhances it even more. Next up is the possibility of a better anti-aliasing filter like we saw at 1080p on the A6000 line. This was a problem at times and improvements would be more than welcome. The next leak is of a new color science from Sony. Improvements in this aspect of the camera can help 
Sony catch up to Canon's amazing color science without forcing us to use profiles and endless altercations to settings to even come close to their colors. Up next is a big one, which would fix a huge problem in 4K modes, the addition of a global shutter, which in layman's terms means scanning the sensor all at once instead of a rolling shutter which scans top to bottom so fast motion doesn't turn the videos sideways. Another huge leak, which I think many people will agree with, is a fully articulating screen. Yes, I understand Sony has their reasoning. They don't want to copy the competition with their side flip out screens, and they have their own vlogging cameras already, so I know where they're coming from. But even for me, I have never vlogged in my life, but I make videos just like this one. And being able to see myself while doing it for framing rather than well, take a look at this. I want a flip out screen. Moving on to a feature that is more of an extra than a fix, 4K video at 60 frames per second. Now from what I've found, it seems like the 4K 30 will no longer have a crop, or in other words will be at Super 35, and also a possibility of HDR support at both 4K 30 and 4K 24 and 25 frames per second. With no crop on 4K 30, that means that the 4K 60 will most likely have a crop of around 1.6 times and a record limit due to the heat. Speaking of heat, this new camera is rumored to have much better heat managing, reducing the overheating issues and hopefully restoring people's faith in recording 4K in warmer conditions. Moving on to memory, we should expect to see only one card slot, but it should be a UHS-2 and we should see USB 3.1 ports. Along with this faster card, we should also see faster performance on startups and just general use due to the better hardware and software optimizations. To complement this, we can hope to see it feature a better UI and dare I say it, touch control so that you can use the screen to navigate menus rather than having to use the dials. With this extra horsepower, we can also expect to see uncompressed RAW along with 20 frames per second max shooting speeds and a 1 8,000th of a second shutter up from the A6500's 11 frames per second and a 1 4,000th of a second max shutter. Now for some reason the viewfinder might have a reduced size but with the same resolution so it will still look amazing or possibly better but I'm not sure why they would make it smaller. Moving on, although it would be a blessing and a curse to have bigger batteries for longer battery life but then having to buy new ones and have a larger camera, Sony seems to be sticking with their puny batteries from the rest of the Sony A6000 lineup, so all we can really wish for here is better efficiency from the new processors. We might also expect to see a headphone jack for monitoring audio, as these cameras have been great for both photos and videos, but especially on their amazing 4K video quality. As for a price, we have seen leaks for of a price of around $1400 American for the camera body alone and the possibility of a new kit lens, but there isn't much information on the price of that bundle. So those are the leaks about the next Sony crop sensor mirrorless camera. It takes a lot of bases for fixing issues with the Sony A6500 and adds to the good. If this camera actually turns out to have all of these features, it may be the first time I've pre-ordered anything in my life unless Sony would be nice enough to send a preview unit. What do you want to see in the next Sony crop sensor camera? Let me know down below. I'm really interested to see what you guys want in their next camera. I will leave a list of all the speculated features. Take care everyone and thank you for viewing. Have a great weekend and stay creative.